So we've looked at three ways for solving quadratic equations. We've got factoring, we've got the square root property, and we have completing the square. But they don't always work out very nicely for us, right? Sometimes completing the square can be a pain if there are fractions involved, right? But there's a way to get around that. Now, what I'm going to show you can be used on all of the quadratic equations, but it's not the best thing for us to use on all of them. And I've had students tell me that their teachers in the past have said, always plug it into the quadratic formula. That, that's not good advice. That's very bad advice. With these quadratic equations, it's going to be up to us to look at what we have and figure out what is going to be the best method for us to use. We're going to troubleshoot it, pick the best method, the most efficient method, and save ourselves a lot of time. So your quadratic equation is of this form, ax squared plus bx plus c. And you can find solutions to any of these equations by using the quadratic formula. Now, quadratic formula is this. x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root, big square root, of b squared minus 4ac, and that's all one term, all divided by 2a. Please notice how I've written this formula, okay? It's one big fraction. This fraction bar does not go underneath x and equal, so if you write it that way, stop it. Also, this is 4 times a times c, so this is all connected as a single group right here. And you know what? There's a little song that may help you remember how this goes. So it's sung to the tune of Pop Goes the Weasel. Now, please bear with me. But let this song sink into your brain. X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. Right? It's just like a creepy jack in the box that you would have played with as a child. Well, let's see how this guy works. Okay. So if we are trying to solve this equation, x squared plus 9x plus 5 is equal to 0. Now, for all of these problems, I want to go through that progression that we have for solving a quadratic equation so you know, you know, should I be using the quadratic formula or should I be using something that is less work? So go through this. Number one is, can I use the square root property? Well, you see that you have x in multiple spots, so the answer is no square root property. If I just had this, yeah, square root property. Number two, can I factor this? Meaning, can I use the zero factor theorem? Well, you're not going to find factors of five that add to nine, so this is not going to factor. The third thing we talked about was completing the square. For us to complete the square nicely and easily, there are two things we wanted. We wanted this guy to be a lead coefficient of one, and we have that, so that's good. But we also wanted the middle coefficient to be even because part of the process of completing the square is to divide this guy right here by two. If I divide this by two, I'm gonna get a fraction and it's not going to be fun. So even though I can complete the square, I'm gonna say, let's not do that. So we land on the method of last resort. Not the first thing you do, but when nothing else works out nicely. And that's the quadratic formula. So before you use the quadratic formula, you have to first identify what these values are. What's A, B, and C? All right, so here we can identify that A, that lead coefficient is one, B is nine, and C is Five. It's just the coefficients. It's just those values. You're not going to be including the x's in there, right? It's just the 1, the 9, and the 5. But do pay attention to your signs. This was a positive 9, so that's why I'm just writing 9. It's positive 5, so that's why I'm writing 5. Now, your formula. Anytime you're going to use the quadratic formula, you need to write the quadratic formula. That's what we're going to do. So we've got it here at the top of the page, but still we're going to write it every time x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. That's right, good job! All over 2a. Alright, let's see what happens here. So x is equal to negative 9 
plus or minus the square root of what? So that's b squared. So since b is 9, b squared is 81. Minus 4ac. Now here's what I like to do. I like to take this minus 4ac and can I work him off to the side here? So I need to do negative 4 times a times c. And when I work all that together, I end up with negative 20. So what I'm doing, I'm not just looking at the 4ac, I'm including that negative that's there in front. I'm doing the product on the side, and I get to put it back into my formula like that. And this is all over 2a. So let's see, a is 1. 2 times 1 is 2. Uh, something that I mentioned before is that this fraction bar does not go underneath the x equals. The fraction bar is also not contained inside the radical. The radical is sitting on top of it. Okay. And let's clean this up. So x equals negative 9 plus or minus the square root. 81 minus 20 is 61. And this is all divided by 2. Now, you would want to take that square root of 61 and see if it reduces. But 61 is prime, so it doesn't reduce at all. So this is it. Now, you could have gotten the same answer by completing the square. But I'm going to tell you right now, it's not going to be that much fun. This is why we go through the progression so we can figure out what's going to be the easiest way and the most efficient way of solving these quadratic equations. All right. So let's go to the next video and do a couple more examples.